COP17 has entered its second week of negotiations. I caught up with South Africa's National Planning Minister Trevor Manuel and asked him about the balance between social and climate considerations. We need to find a balance between the two. You know, um, across the African continent, for instance, uh, uh, most, most people, most of the billion people on this continent don't actually have electricity. Uh, available. They can't turn on a light switch in their house uh, or in their village. Uh, and so, you know, it isn't even the shift between cheap uh, coal-fired energy uh, and a new green energy. Just having energy available uh, will, be very, will bring a very significant change to the lives of the majority. Um, in, in, in the case of South Africa, where we've kind of been reared on a, a, a unsustainable environment of very uh, low cost uh, uh, electricity. Uh, that has had to change. Uh, it's not popular, but it has had to change uh, as a consequence of decisions of NERSA, as a consequence also of the need to uh, uh, improve on, on the output and the consistency and reliability of energy uh, from, from ESCOM. Uh, but you know, I think it changes for all time. Now we need to focus on a series of other issues. We need to focus on uh, ensuring that we don't emit uh, as much carbon as we do. I don't think that, that we're suggesting as a planning commission that we can go off coal entirely. Um, but we must invest in the research and development to ensure that South Africa does have clean coal technologies that is lower emitting and cleaner. South Africa is embarking on a nuclear strategy that of course has been put in place, but do you think that it is a solution for Africa? Uh, no, I think the best solution for Africa is actually hydro and Africa has enormous potential. Uh, the Inga uh, prospects on the uh, Congo River uh, has the capability, Grand Inga has the capability of producing sufficient energy for all of the African continent. It'll be clean and green. And if you add in other potentials such as that available in the Central African Republic, it comes back to us. We can do this quite differently. Uh, we might even be able to re-engineer some of the Lesotho Highlands to be able to get more, more hydropower from it. Um, the other, the other um, uh, elements that people are chasing Africa has in abundance. Uh, that's water. We have sunlight uh, in abundance and so I, I, I fervently believe that the breakthrough, the game changes in respect of uh, solar energy will actually come from the African continent. I know that Spain has, has made tremendous progress uh, in their concentrated uh, photovoltaic but I think that, that, that we're likely to leapfrog them uh, and similarly there's a lot of wind and, and some of the, 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 the wind power generated uh, I don't know, but it must be uh, a very high double-digit percentage that the Canary Islands are already uh, generating from, from wind power. So we can do these things. But at the end of the day, it actually comes down to funding. It does come down to funding, uh, which is why uh, all of these people around us have gathered in Durban. One of the issues on the chopping block is agreement on a green climate fund. Um, you know, and, and we have to go back to Copenhagen in 2009 when there was a decision to establish a, a, a fund that will receive about $100 billion a year. Uh, and that's a large amount of money. $100 billion a year is a large amount of money. Uh, and it's a flow from the developed to the developing world. Uh, and in Cancun last year there was agreement that a green climate fund be, be, be established. Uh, I was, I was co-chair of the transitional committee that has had the responsibility over these past uh, nine months to design the fund. We've placed the design of the fund before this conference. I'm pretty confident that uh, uh, we will adopt that by uh, uh, Wednesday, Thursday of this week. And then we have a commitment by heads of state from, from Copenhagen. We have an institution that should be able to manage a large fund on a growing basis. And so resources to climate-proof countries and 
energy generation is part of climate proofing. Resources will flow as we get the systems in place. Many developed countries have actually come out and been very vocal with regards to the guilt fee that they feel they have to pay. Do you agree with this guilt fee that they are alluding to? And essentially it is about the industrialized nations versus the nations that haven't been industrialized and we're talking about the African continent. Well that is, that is in the nature of the agreement struck uh, uh, and, and the heads of state were there, you know. Uh, it's important to remind ourselves that a number of uh, European uh, heads of government and heads of, of state were there. Barack Obama was there. Uh, Hu Jintao, uh, Chinese uh, president, was there. President Zuma was there. Uh, they all got together and said, this hundred billion needs to flow in this way. It's not guilt money, it's developmental resources. It's very important that we're not treated as guilt, but as development needs. Uh, and this is what's on the block here. And we must ensure that that money flows and that it does what it's meant to do.